Show your tits! Show your tits! <laughs> Do it! Later. Yes! Take your time. I'm getting there. Alright. Thank you everybody for coming out. We really appreciate it. More big hands. Everybody just play. Chris on the, on the guitar, Ed on the bass. Anyway, for those of you who don't know me, you're about to learn a lot about me. My name's John Boy. This is my first stand up routine, so we'll see how it goes. You can't tell. Thank you, Mr. Strickland. You're welcome. Alright, so this one time. Don't point it that way, heard. Alright, so this one time. Like that? There you go. Alright. I'm a rookie, who knew? So this one time, I got poison ivy. And it started out small. And like the man that I am, I said, I don't need to go to a doctor. I got this. And it turns out, I was wrong. Since I had never had poison ivy before, I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. And it just kept getting worse and worse. The rash started at my ankles, and it kept creeping its way up my legs. And if you're thinking right now that it's hard to get laid when your legs are covered in a rash, just wait till it makes its way up to your dick. <laughs> well, actually, I don't recommend that, but that's what I did. Anyway, I knew I had reached a new low in my life when I started jacking off with cortisone cream. <laughs> now, don't act like you wouldn't do the same thing if you were in my shoes. And I'll admit, it wasn't my finest five and a half minutes of my life. But, looking back on it, I figure it is single-handedly oh. the most efficient orgasm I have ever reached. That was a good one. Now, don't everybody start judging me all at once now. Well, that was a good one. <laughs> Y'all all know how this came about. Do you know how hard it is to smother your penis in any sort of lotion and not finish? I figure, once you're in the starting blocks, you might as well finish the race. Exactly. But no, how many, how, no matter how many applications of cortisone I used, it just kept getting worse. So after three months or so of a dry spell, I finally decided maybe I should see a doctor. And I told the doctor what had been going on, and he said, yeah, three months is a long time to have a poison ivy rash. I said, I know. That's why I'm here, Doc. And he wrote me a prescription, and I was on my way. And it got better. But not better, better, you know what I'm saying? And in about a month, I was back to the full-time lewd self-service. But why didn't the medicine work? I got it from a doctor, right? And doctors are smart, right? I mean, they're in college for seven years. I mean, I've been in college for seven years, and I'm not a doctor. <laughs> anyway, the medicine didn't work. And that's because it was the wrong medicine. Now, don't be fooled. There wasn't a mix-up at the pharmacy or anything. No. I mean, you, you know, they call what doctors do practice for a reason. And it's because it turns out what that doctor told me was wrong. I didn't have poison ivy at all. I had scabies. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what scabies are, they're fucking terrible, and we'll just leave it at that. Anyway, I'm not sure how I got the scabies, but I know they suck. Literally, too. Uh, when I went to a different doctor for a second opinion, and of, of course she was a hot doctor, she asked me to lift my shirt. And when I did, she backed up against the wall with a look of disgust maybe even a horror on her face. She said this was the worst case she had ever seen. And that was just my shirt. I hadn't even dropped my pants yet. And of course, again, she had to be a hot doctor. Let's see. Something like that is the beginning of at least a thousand, I'm just speculating here, a thousand snuff films. 
By that I mean pornos. But you know what the difference between me and those male porn stars is? Other than dick size? They didn't have scabies. But back to dick size for a minute. Have you ever seen a porn star with a dick smaller than yours? Yeah, me either. And the day I do, it's going to be the best moment of my life, followed by the worst feeling ever. Why, you ask? Because this dude's dick is smaller than mine, and he's still getting paid to get pussy, and I'm the guy jacking off for free. And have y'all ever seen those videos or webcams of girls masturbating? That would never work for guys. Talk about a double standard. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, just like every other double standard. But it's too bad, because that's a job I could really, you know, put my heart and soul into. I mean, I love working with hands and all. But they say, when you find a job that you enjoy, you'll never work a day again in your life. And considering that jagging off is probably my most unattractive, well, three to thirty minutes a day, depending on how many videos the site lets me watch before asking me to subscribe. <laughs> Which I would never do, because that kind of ruins, it takes the fun out of masturbation for me. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure the full video is worth it and all, but if I wanted to pay to get off, I'd just get a hooker or a girlfriend. Hey! But I digress. Anyhow, until professional masturbation becomes more profitable, and don't think I haven't considered sperm banks. I just don't like the idea of potentially becoming a father without the benefit of actually getting laid. I feel like it's like paying for car insurance on a car you don't own. But at the end of the day, you're still just fucking yourself. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to figure out another hobby to turn professional. And since I don't think they're hiring professional pot smokers or beer drinkers anytime soon, I figured I'd start with stand-up comedy, but we'll see how that goes. I'll think of that. But who knows? I might just be hitting up the sperm bank on the way home. I just hope they keep better hours than a regular bank, otherwise I'll never make it. But maybe, maybe if there was a sperm credit union, now that's something I could get behind. I mean, for the members, by the members. You know, walk in the door. Hello, sir. Welcome to the credit union of nuts and testicles. Now, I know, I know, that's not a very professional name. But fuck you, it's my dream job. And I don't know what I want. And I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to have an acronym of my business spell out the cunt on all of our official documents and uniforms. Come on, John. Think of all the bad press. That's what people would say. Um, it's a sperm credit union, people. And think of all the advertising catchphrases. You know, the commercial starts. Uh, here at The Cunt, our first goal is exceptional customer services. Or... Here at The Cunt, we believe in tailoring our packages to meet the needs of each customer individually. We'd be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for three weeks every month. Then, like a true cunt, we'd close down for a week. I got that one. I got it. That's a reference to the menstrual cycle. Yes, Mr. Strickland, a reference to the menstrual cycle. Correct. I was, I was, I was clarifying for video. <laughs> oh, Lord, there's video of this. That means it's proof. I know, it sounds ridiculous, but imagine how much fun it would be to be a member. Hey mom, what are you doing today? I'm about to go grab a bite to eat, John. Do you want to join me? Yeah, just uh, give me ten minutes. I gotta swing by the cut and drop off my sperm deposit and then I'm on my way. I mean, I would say that every time I talk to my mom on the phone, regardless of whether or not I was actually about to do that. <laughs> And then my mom would kill me. But not violently. It'd be the most passive-aggressive murder in the history of crime. I mean, do y'all ever feel like your mom has just, like, willed you to die? 
you know, with just her eyes. Like her eyes that say, God damn it, I love the shit out of you, son. But if you just drop dead right now, it'd be a whole lot easier. Because moms, at least my, my mom, is too sweet to ever truly want me dead. But there's always that, if only I had made your father pull out 23 years ago, I wouldn't be in this mess right now. I call that the coat hanger stare. I mean, it literally, the stare feels like a coat hanger just boring into the middle of my forehead. Oh, mom. Uh, but my mom's too sweet. She would never actually will be dead. I mean, she goes to church twice a week. So she's putting up a lot of credit with God. Like that kid at the, the Chuck E. Cheese that's saving up all the tickets to buy the giant stuffed animal that nobody can afford. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's like 500,000 tickets for a giant gorilla. And that, well, anyway, that's my take on heaven. <laughs> and either she's getting pretty close to the point where she can afford that purple gorilla, or she's done so much in her life that she has to confess it twice a week to get it all out. Either way, I don't want to be on her bad side. Next page. But, at the end of the day, I have a mama's boy. And for some reason, she loves me. There are times when I'm not even sure why, like if she was at this stand-up right now. But, she's getting there. She just got a Facebook, you know, getting up with the times. And one of the first things she did was, you know, like the ECBMA on Facebook. I got to get her props for that. My dad's got a pretty gnarly beard, so she bought him a t-shirt. And uh, my dad and his beard, I was talking to him about it one day. And he's, got a, he's got a notorious habit for utilizing his flavor saver more than is generally publicly acceptable. And so we started talking about it one morning at breakfast. And I said, you know, what's the... The best slash worst thing you've ever gotten stuck in your, your beard. I mean, what's y'all's? Your Anybody? mustache. You got a mustache stuck your in your beard. Your mustache. Oh, my mustache. Is that the best or the worst? That's the worst. I'll take that as a comment next time. <laughs> Was there, can confirm. Well, all I'm going to say is that mine, the worst, is... I'm just glad I don't have an allergic to shellfish. Because it was crabs. <laughs> I mean, my mustache was all itchy, and I'm scratching at my face. And when people look at you like that, they usually think you're jonesing for something. The problem is, you can't really correct them. It's like, no, 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 I'm not a cokehead. I just have crabs on my mustache. <laughs> Shit, I'd rather be a cokehead. At least that's still respectable. Okay, so face crabs. The bright side of that story is that's when I started, or that's what prompted me to start waxing my mustache. It's a proven fact. You can't catch face crabs if you consistently wax your mustache. Falcles get all waxy and slippery and the, the face crabs just can't get a grip. You gotta be careful. Because those face crabs, they might decide that they want to return to their normal lives as crabs. Head right back down to your pubes. And that's no better. I mean, come on folks, I didn't call my mustache the saddle for nothing. Just check my Lulu account. It says hashtag giving dot dot dot. But recently I've gotten rid of the stirrups. I mean those of you who knew me knew I had some curls, such as Kevin here. He's got some saddle or he's got some stirrups on his saddle. Anyway, so I've changed the conquistador. And the plan behind that is to go boldly where probably many men have gone before. But now that shit belongs to me. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have tonight, folks. Thanks for coming out. Oh, and it's happening all day. Bottle, bottle. <laughs>